skin. Hello people of YouTube and welcome back to Dark Souls 3. Where we last left off, we had just gotten halfway through High Wall of Lothric. Yeah. In this video, we will hopefully finish High Wall of Lothric and maybe even make it into the Undead Settlement. Hopefully. We will see if I am successful or not. I don't want to risk falling off this wooden beam. If I do, I could get killed really easily. So let's wait for him to get close. And kill. Booyah. Alright then. I got this guy. Don't be a dick. And let us progress forward. Get down. Well, yep, he's climbing up. Ow. Jerk. Don't hit me. I'm trying to save Vestus and whatnot. Now I need to rush in. Slice, slice. Oh, then. That can be such a risky thing right there. If you don't kill him fast enough, he will turn into giant black snake like thing that will wreck your face. I'm not even kidding when I say that. He's, it, he is one pretty powerful enemy if you are not careful. But yeah, moving on. Let's climb down the ladder and hopefully not get shot by this dick over here with a crossbow. healing. Alright then. Now comes one of the more annoying parts. Well, maybe an annoying part. Uh, you to kill. You to kill. Got this item to get. Those old, those old hunter charms can be helpful if you need to get, get any mimics without fighting them. <coughs> uh, ow. Uh, sorry about that. Ooh, a crossbow. Um, but, yeah, as I was trying to say before I sneezed, uh, the old hunter charms can actually be pretty helpful in taking out, the, or not taking out, but getting the items out of a mimic. This guy is what makes this part a little tricky. I do not think I'd actually get that. Crap, I thought I killed them all. Dang it, I cannot take on both these guys at once. Come on now. You die. We deal with the Lost of Night. The thing is, that great shield is the thing that makes these guys such a pain in the ass. Darn it, I hate that shield bash. I always expect the, the freaking spear attack and. Ow, come on! This is why the. Sh Freaking spear wielding Lothric knights are a pain in the ass, and no one likes them. I'll die. I hate dealing with these guys. They never go down easy. Thank you. I'm not good at fighting them, at least not on low level. Higher level, I can do a slightly better job, but not much better. 
Okay, now we kill you. No. No. You aren't killing us, we kill you. Thank you. And now we have a broadsword. Which is slightly higher damage, but has... Well, actually, I think it has the same range as the, uh... The, uh, short sword. Um... Do I have anything for healing purposes? I do not. Okay, I'm gonna do a risky maneuver. That is liable to get me killed, but we can still try it. Basically, there's a shortcut down here that can take us to the first bonfire. Provided I can get it open without getting myself killed. So... We have these guy, this guy, Winged Knight. I do not recommend fighting him at this point in the game, unless you are really, really confident in your skills. Oh wait, okay, I got an Estus back. Sweet. I love when you get those random Estus from getting kills and whatnot. So random that you don't even know it happens. Yeah, I'm still not sure on the whole mechanic behind that behind what causes the random Estus like that. And a Ring of Sacrifice. Rings of Sacrifice are always helpful. Especially if you go to run suicide missions. Yeah. Basically, if you die while wearing that ring, you lose nothing. You just die, well, you lose the ring. You don't lose nothing in terms of experience or your ember or anything like that. But you will lose every. But you will lose uh, the ring itself. You will lose one ring of sacrifice upon dying with a ring of sacrifice equipped. So, yeah. Um, how much do I need to level? Oh, I can actually get a couple levels. Sweet. So, we're gonna take the elevator back up, and upon reaching the top. We will unlock a shortcut. Woo. Where we will have a giant axe wielder waiting for us. And that's someone, that's someone we can apparently die to. That was not my plan. That was not my plan. Shoot. Okay. Okay, we can we can bounce back from this. That not like we lost too many souls. Well, I mean, I guess it's a it's a decent amount to well, I say decent amount, but like a large amount to lose early on. But I mean, we haven't lost them permanently. We can still go get them, provided I don't hit the wrong button and get killed again. But we haven't lost them yet. We can always go back and get them again. But ow! But you know, oh come on, you stupid spaz attackers! Sorry, I don't like. Sp I don't like. That's one thing I will say. I don't like about enemies in this game is I don't like the low-level spaz attackers. They'll stun lock you and smack you a good five or six times before you can even do anything. Run up here. And we'll kill you. And we will move on. We'll roll down here. Kill you. Knock you down. Kill you. That one down there is going to start working his way back up. So let's actually wait here for him. Waiting and waiting and waiting and goodbye. It's always fun to do something like that. Okay, now we have to deal with this douche. I really, really hate dealing with these. Spear wielding Lothric Knights. Dang it! 
to know the birds do most of their guard though, so I should be able to come away. And okay, that's actually a really nice strategy there. I did not know about. Ooh. So the spear building welder knight is down, and we can move forward. We have this dick who will try to kill us again. He'll almost get away with it. Uh, I wonder. Oh, I forgot I had the axe equipped. It's been a little while since I last played, but let's actually get the crossbow out. One thing I will always recommend in any any playthrough of Souls game is to always carry some sort of of ranged weapon. Even if you don't use the ranged weapon as a primary weapon for your build or anything. It's always good to have at least some sort of ranged weapon. Simply for crowd control. You can shoot these guys and lure them away from the crowd, making the group much smaller and easier to deal with than trying to take care of a good seven or eight enemies all in one room, all at once, trying to kill you. It's a strategy I would always recommend to anyone, especially their first time playing a Souls game, is to have this simply for crowd control. Because if you can lure the enemies away from the grip, from the if you can lure the enemies away from the horde, it is always going to be easier to handle them than it is to handle them as one large group. Now we've taken out the big ones. We can begin taking out the smaller fries, such as these dogs, that are actually really, really annoying, but are also weak to fire. And the cell key! The cell key is an amazingly useful item that we are most definitely going to want. We also want the essence shard, because that's helpful and I forgot about the people up there. I always forget about those people up there because I usually go there first. <laughs> oh, well, well, that works. I was not trying to kill him like that, but hey, if it works, it works. I'm not going to complain. Alright then. So we killed him, and here we can get a Silver Eagle Kite Shield, which is a far better shield than the one we already had. Though it is also a weapon art shield, meaning we cannot parry with this shield like we could our other one. This one instead lets us use the arts found within our weapons instead. Which is not a bad thing. Now if we take this path over here we will find a few more useful items. The first one we will find, green blossoms. I never really use those, but other people do find them useful as eating them will get, may, give you faster stamina recovery. Then there's the Astora Straight Sword, which we do actually have the faith required to wield it. Uh, and our damage will actually go up quite a bit higher from using this, so okay. This will be our weapon for now. Um, we'll come out into this area, where you will see the Winged Knight again. Now, right down below us is an item and an enemy. The item being a rapier. Now, I'm gonna run from the winged knight like I'm like crazy, because I'm not going to try and fight that stupid thing. Early game, that guy is a pain in the butt to fight. Though he can drop a pretty cool high stat costing weapon, if you can kill him, he has a chance of dropping his giant halberd. Which, from what I've seen, is actually a really powerful weapon. So, okay. So, we'll run through here, you stupid jerks. I want you all to die. Thank you. And now I'm not going to be an idiot. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I pull the lever. I've made that mistake in the past where I go to rush for an elevator like this that I already sent up, and I ended up falling to my death because I forgot I already used the elevator. So, upwards we go, we can go reclaim our souls, as we have a decent amount of better gear now.
And we'll acquire the throwing knives. And we will burn this guy. Or we can try to burn this guy and keep missing because our shots keep hitting the walls. No, it's screw this crap. Kill him. Kill. That did not look like a backstab, but okay. And he did not drop us a th single thing. That guy actually has a, has a chance of dropping the great the great axe though, which it's you it's not a bad uh, strength weapon. It's just not something you're gonna be able to use early game unless you put a lot of stats into your strength. So we will progress further and further and further until we'll come back to the first bonfire. Gotta love these interconnected shortcuts. Now I'm gonna head back to Firelink Shrine as there's, we have enough souls to level up, and we have some a few soul items we can use to acquire more souls. And with those extra souls, we may get more levels or better items that we can buy. So we're at Firelink Shrine now, upon which I shall use all of these items, which. If you want to make some of these go by faster, you can sell these to the old lady sitting in the chair down the hall. The old lady will sell you these for the same price as what they are worth. So you can actually sell them to her to make it go by faster instead of, instead of having to go through that animation there. I'll raise my attunement up by one more. My intelligence and faith can go to 15. I am going to raise my dexterity up by one. With 15 uh, faith and intelligence, I should be I good for have... now. Um, I do want to see about maybe selling something I don't need. Um, is there anything I don't need that I'm carrying that I, I'd willingly sell? Um, I, I'm going to just go ahead and sell the binoculars. Like I said, I believe I said in the last episode. I... Uh, the binoculars are pretty useless in this game. Welcome Unless you're someone who really, you. really wants to look at the scenery of Dark Souls, it's a pretty useless item. So we'll raise up our dexterity. Farewell, Ashen Warning. Our dexterity is now 12. Are we actually able to use the rapier, I wonder? Uh, we are able to use the rapier now. Which I might consider doing. I have not decided on what melee weapon and whatnot I want this character to use. Oh wait, I almost made a mistake. I always do this when I enter Firelink Shrine. And I have stuff to use that I always forget to come talk to Andre. I have an Estus Shard so we can upgrade our Estus. Cool. Andre's still awesome. And we'll progress even further forward. And a real quick check, is this armor here actually better? It's better physical, but weaker elemental. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take it. Simply because there's not a large number of enemies, at least not in the early game anyway, that will use elemental attacks. So having the better physical armor could be, be will, will, will normally be a better thing to have. Now... We're going back here because to the uh, tower apart, I think is what it's called, bonfire, as there is another area here I did not go to, simply because I did not have the key required to enter this place. Because further down below here is a cell, which we need the cell key we acquired earlier from the room with all the dogs. Um... With that key, we can actually unlock a pretty useful character. At least I've always found him relatively useful. Not everyone will find a use for him, but I still say he's he's worth getting. Because he can get some pretty nice items for the player to buy and whatnot. Because we are about to go unlock a merchant for Firelink Shrine. Uh, we do have this guy, so we'll just come down on top of his head and kill him. Woo. Oh, another raw gem. That's actually a rather rare encounter, a rare drop from those guys. Kill you. Kill you. And we'll pick up the mail breaker. 
Coming down here, we will find the cell to our soon-to-be buddy, Grey Rat. Ah. You're no jailer, are you? No, no, you're from far away. And judging by the bell, you must be some of that unkindled ash. Remarkable. Below, not a okay. uh, I'll be uh, with you. Very well. I know some people I may not like the fact I'm skipping through his dialogue, but. In all honesty, he doesn't say anything too important. All he really says is that he he realizes you're unkin you, that you're the unkindled one, and he asks you to go to the undead settlement and find, uh, bring deliver that ring that he gave us, the blue tearstone ring, to a name to a woman named Loretta, and whatnot. The blue tearstone ring's not entirely useful in my opinion, but it does have some uses. Um. But he'll ask us to bring the ring to her and down in the Undead Settlement, which is the next area once we clear the High Wall of Lothric. Um, other than that, that's all he really says. He doesn't really say much more than that when you actually listen to his dialogue. So we'll head back to the High Wall so that we can progress. And my goal for this video is to try and finish the High Wall of Lothric within the next three and a half minutes. I don't know if that's going to work or if that's going to happen, but I can try. So, if it doesn't happen, then we'll finish the High Wall in the ne next episode and probably continue on with uh, trying to make some progress into the Undead Settlement afterwards. Because there is a lot to do in the Undead Settlement. A lot of people to find, a lot of things to find. So. I'm gonna jump down here. Ow, I thought you were already up the stairs. Gosh darn it. Oh. That was a waste of some healing, but oh well. Take the elevator down. Down, down, down we go. I always send, now when I do this, I always send the elevator back up for one simple reason. If you die, you don't want to have to stand around and wait for the elevator to come back. Because it, it takes a little bit. So what I always do is when I use an elevator, I always send it back up. That way, if I die or whatnot, then I can... Uh, if I die, I can always just take the elevator back down immediately. Um, now we do have a bunch of Lothric Knights here, but I'm just going to run past them all. Provided I can, without getting myself killed. Um, as we have a lady in here. To, in here. Now, you can talk to her. And she'll tell you that there are no Lords of Cinder here, blah blah blah. What on it's actually just faster to get through everything. Just kill her. And don't feel too bad. In the normal game, the the normal way the game progresses, she would end up dead anyway in order to give you the Basin of Vows. With the Basin of Vows, if you put it, if you walk up to that statue over there of the man beheading himself with a sword, it'll start a late game boss fight right here. If you are a new game plus or are simply really, really confident in your skills, you can attempt to fight that boss right here, right now, before ever leaving the High Wall of Lothric. It's not something I would recommend, especially not to new players, but if you're someone who's severely confident in your skills and you really do believe you'll be able to beat her, then by all means, go ahead and attempt it. But I can guarantee you, if this is your first playthrough of the game, there's a high chance you will die. Much to that, much like that. So, I don't have enough time to finish the high wall in this episode. Uh, I'm trying to keep these episodes around 25 minutes long and not really going too much, too far over that, because. Um, mainly because Dark Souls, while it is fun, if you know what you're doing, the game can actually be relatively short. If you know where to go and where things are at. 
your first time playing, you'll explore a lot more, find a bunch of items and stuff. But with that being said, I'll end off the video here. In the next video, we'll finish up the High Wall of Lothric and make it make our way to the Undead Settlement. So, until then, so long.